Hello everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions, where we talk all things media. So today I'm here with part two of my July Dollar Tree haul. So if you guys missed it, part one was posted yesterday, so definitely check that out. There were over 40 movies in there and they were all different genres. Uh, there was actually a couple collectibles in there as well. Today is all movies um, and it was supposed to be all horror movies, but I totally forgot that I ended up moving some of the documentaries that I found out of yesterday's video and I uh, put them in this pile for today's video. So you have horror and you have documentaries. Um, and then I hit up a couple more Dollar Trees because I clearly have a problem. Um, but I found like four more items and I'm just going to stick those in this video rather than doing a part three because there's not enough to do a part three. So yeah, so there are not just horror in this video, but it will be the vast majority will be horror movies. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to it. If you do like this video, please give it a like down below. That really does help me out. Uh, yeah, but let's not waste any more time at all, guys. Let's dive right in to my July Dollar Tree haul part two. Let's start off with the non-horror DVDs. So first up is one that's actually from Shout Factory, which I didn't realize. This was in previous ways, but I decided to pick it up this time because I picked it up and actually looked at it. Uh, this is called uh, Basmati Blues. Basmati Blues. I think it's something like that anyway. Um, and this is starring Brie Larson, who is excellent. So that's one of the main reasons I wanted to grab it. But like I said, it is Shout Factory, which I think is what grabbed my attention. Um, but it is a Bollywood romantic comedy. So I have not spent a ton of time with Bollywood films, but on the Cinefessions podcast that we did years and years ago, we did do a few Bollywood films and they were so much fun. And so because I had such a blast with those, I figured this one would be really cool too. So I figured I would check it out. So Basmati Blues from Shout Factory starring Brie Larson. That's the first one. And I'm going to kind of do like I did yesterday. There's too many to talk about. I want to do as little editing as possible. So we'll just kind of run through them as quickly as possible. Um, but next up is a documentary and this is a TV series. This is called the Awful Truth with Michael Moore, and this is the complete first season. So I know Michael Moore is a super divisive figure, but I've really enjoyed his documentaries, and I'd never even heard of this. I didn't know he had a TV series, and so there's only six episodes, so I figured I might as well check it out and see how it is. Um, yeah, so looks really interesting, really enjoy his work, so I will check that one out. I think that's the only TV series in this one, um, but this is a, another documentary, and it's about like the war on drugs, so it looks really interesting. This is called The Source. And there's some other thing. It says Travel the Road. I don't know exactly what that means, but I don't know. It looks interesting. Um, it's a story of bringing light into darkness is what the poll quote on the back says. Um, but it's a four-part document uh, documentary that is an unprecedented look into the global drug, tra drug trade. So I guess this is more of a docu-series than a documentary, but I am super intrigued to check this one out. I wonder how long this one is doesn't oh 120 minutes so not terribly long so a couple hours so yeah very intrigued to check out the source I love documentaries and so whenever I find them I am so excited and this one is right up my alley I'm a huge hockey fan uh, obviously being in Detroit hockey town it is what it is um, this is called Ice Guardians and this is a documentary about basically about grinders in the NHL uh, and so like my number one all-time grinder has to be Darren McCarty because again I'm a Red Wings fanatic so yeah like I just I love these guys and so I cannot wait to check this movie out this is one I will watch and then I will send it over to my sister to watch because she is also just a huge hockey fan. Arguably, she's actually even a bigger hockey fan than I am, uh, frankly, at this point. But yeah, so she'll love that because she's a big fan of those guys too. So that one is uh, one that has not only my name on it, but also my sister. So that's always cool. Uh, next up is called Power of Grayscale, uh, Grayskull, rather, the definitive history of Masters of the Universe. Like, I cannot wait to watch this. This is going to be so awesome. You guys know I just collected uh, like four of the five He-Man figures or uh, Masters of the Universe figures. And so this is kind of in that same vein. It is a documentary about uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, and it looks pretty darn fun. So very excited for this one. The Power of Grayscale, the definitive history of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. That should be awesome. And then last but not least, the final documentary that I found is a brilliant one. 
Uh, this was an Academy Award nominee, apparently, which I didn't even realize. Um, and now I have to get the other two in this series. I've talked about this in the past, uh, but this is called Paradise Lost 3 Purgatory. So uh, Paradise Lost is a documentary series. There are three films in the series that uh, talk about the West Memphis Three, which were uh, these this group of three kids who were wrongfully accused of killing three younger boys. So it was a, this horrible murder in West Memphis. And uh, basically because these, go these boys were... I don't know, different, I guess. Uh, they were said to be like uh, devil worshipers and Satanists and things like that. Because of that stigma, they ended up being charged with this crime. And it was just this whole horrible story. Uh, part one is basically like the beginning and how they got put into jail. Part two is their fight while in jail and trying to figure out maybe who did it. And then part three really uh, goes even more into who really committed these crimes and kind of the what happens at the end, which I guess I won't spoil, but uh, this is a wonderfully filmed documentary series that I cannot recommend enough. Uh, this is, <laughs> I'm going to drop it on my face here, but this is the third part in that series. Um, definitely recommend it. It is amazing. Uh, there's actually a narrative movie out uh, that's called the, uh, what's it called? Devil's Knot with uh, Reese Witherspoon, I think is in that. So another uh, kind of look at it, but on a, uh, not a documentary look though, a narrative film look on it. So yeah, I cannot wait to watch these again. I do have to get the first two in my collection, but this is one that will, it will never leave the collection. It's just one of those that has always stuck with me since I watched it. I don't even know, maybe five, six years ago now. And it is amazing. Definitely check this docuseries out if you have not. So Paradise Lost 3 Purgatory, and that's the last of the uh, documentary and really the, the last of the non-horror DVDs I picked up. So now let's talk about the horror movies I grabbed. So these first two, I guess, would be like horror light, really. Uh, technically, this one actually says drama on its spine. This is another one from Uncorked. But I mean, clearly, look at this cover. Like they're going for horror vibes. So I stuck it with the horror movies. But um, this is called The Lighthouse. And basically what this one is about are uh, these two guys get trapped in this isolated lighthouse. And then uh, they have dwindling resources and bad things start happening. So I thought it was like a ghost story because it says based on the haunting true story. But I don't think it is. I think it is more of a survivor story so maybe not horror but that's okay it's horror enough um, you guys can take a look at the back here it looks pretty interesting and i love survivor stories so hopefully i'll like that one and then this is the one i found today I, I i found it like thursday when i was out shopping and i had it in my hand but i ended up putting it back by mistake but uh this is called i am fear and you can see on the spine here this is a scream factory title so that's why i wanted to pick it up is because it was scream factory um but this is like, sounds really interesting. This uh, celebrity reporter ends up getting uh, kidnapped by these, I think they're terrorists uh, or extremists, I guess. Um, and then uh, kind of weird things start happening. But it has William Forsyth in this and Bill Mosley is in this as well. So sounds interesting enough. And it's from Scream Factory. So whenever I see Scream Factory, I'm going to add it to my collection. So I Am Fear is the next one. And that was the Scream Factory release. So I think the rest of these are more like traditional horror movies, but um, first up here is called, it, it's an Amityville, M Amityville film, and so I was super excited. This is called Amityville Mount Misery Road. So I am always fascinated by the Amityville story. Um, I've read the book that uh, kind of inspired the original film. It's a wonderful book. Whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter. Uh, I don't read it as a work of nonfiction. I read it as a work of fiction and it is creepy and just well-written. Uh, and so it is what it is. Like, don't go into it, you know, trying to decide, you know, is this real? Is this not? It doesn't really matter. It's an entertaining read. And so it's definitely worth your time. But uh, anyway, this one is just trying to capitalize on that name. And so... Yeah, definitely wanted to pick this one up. It does have a slip cover. Again, if I'm able to get this sticker off, which I noticed like the stickers this time are a little different than previous waves. Uh, normally they're blue, but this one is a white slash gray sticker. So I'm hoping maybe they're easier to take off, but I guess we'll see as I try to. Um, and then we have a supernatural horror film called An English Haunting. Um, and the sub or the, yeah, the subtitle here or the, uh, tagline rather is be careful what you look for so i don't know it looks interesting live a lie or die for the truth um and this is from charlie steeds and this is another one from um high octane who i've talked about yesterday as kind of a at least from my perspective a new player in the dollar tree game because i'd never seen any high octane releases in the past so yeah this one looks pretty darn interesting as well oh and then we have one of these uh bonus movie packs here so this is dark house is the main film which has that amazing cover there and then you can see the two bonus movies on the top we have uh grave secrets the legacy of hilltop drive 
and then empty rooms and i don't see years on either of those so i don't know when they're from exactly but the main film is from 2018 so yeah very intrigued to check that out i don't know it's just another one like I don't know. It's just a low budget horror film that caught my attention. So I'm grabbing it for a dollar. And that's pretty much the only justification I need. And look at that cover. That's a pretty stellar cover. So that's good enough for me. Uh, this one has another creepy cover too. I don't know how to say this one. It's like kooky. I, I, I don't know how you would say that. Kukoi? I don't, let me know down below if you know, but uh, this is the boogeyman. You can kind of see there is a creature up there. Um, it just looks really creepy. It comes at night. Bad kids beware is what the thing says. Um, and this is from Uncorked Entertainment, who probably have the majority of the movies this time around that I saw or that I, that I ended up picking up. Uh, yeah, so you can see that creepy image up here. It looks really cool. Maybe it'll be good. We'll check it out and see. So, uh, cuckoo, kooky. <laughs> I have no idea how to say that. The boogeyman. We'll just go with that. Um, and oh, and I had to grab this one. It is a Krampus film. So I don't know what number Krampus film this is, or if it's even related to the other ones, but this is called Krampus the Reckoning. And like, look at that cover looks so cheap and amazing. Uh, he, no what does that say? He knows you've been naughty is what that tagline is. So yeah, I, I really need to research this and see if it's related to some of the other Krampus films that I've bought from the Dollar Tree. Uh, it's directed by Robert Conway and another one from 2015 from Uncorked Entertainment. Um, and there is actually a couple special features on there, a making of video and a commentary track. I have to see the commentary track on this. So yeah, this looks really fun. I love these dumb movies. So that one will be cool. Uh, this one is called Derailed. Stay inside and die. Go outside and fight for your life. So this sounds interesting. Another one that has some uh, special features on it as well from 2018, another uncorked entertainment film. Um, a woman boards a murder mystery train that derails and then there are weird creatures outside and so they need to fight for their survival. Like, I, honestly, I know that you guys are thinking like, why do you buy these? But they sound interesting to me. Like these sound really cool. And so because of that, because they're so cheap, I want to give them a shot. Again, with all the movies that I bought here, like if I enjoy five of these, then that's good enough for me. Like I'm doing well. So uh, this next one here has an amazing cast. Tobin Bell, Adrian Barbeau is in this, uh, who I just watched recently in, uh, what was I watching? It was a sequel to something. Oh no, it wasn't a sequel. It was uh, John Carpenter's The Fog. I just rewatched that one from my TBW game. Uh, she's amazing. But anyway, Gates of Darkness. And you can see Tobin Bell, Jigsaw himself on the back cover there. Another one from Uncorked Entertainment. No, this is from ITN Distribution. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so this one... Uh, there's twin brothers concerned that he may be possessed. Yeah, so it's a supernatural horror film, uh, but an amazing cast. So that's one I definitely have to uh, put toward the top of the list, given its cast. And then we have, <laughs> so this is one I thought I already owned because there were so many Scarecrow movies back in like the, I guess it was like the what, what, uh, sept late September, early October wave, where there were just so many horror movies. There were a bunch of Scarecrow films, so I thought I had it, but it turns out I didn't. This is Curse of the Scarecrow, um, and this one is from High Octane again from 2018, and it looks pretty interesting. Um, I guess like their parents were murdered by this creature in a scarecrow mask or something and so they go back to the barn years later and then they're starting to get picked off one by one so yeah i don't know sounds good and really interesting to me so we'll see if it is any good or not so that is a uh, curse of the scarecrow Here's another one from Uncorked Entertainment, and this one looks pretty interesting. This is called The Mummy Rebirth, um, and basically these two treasure hunters unleash this mummy, and so they have to track it down before he unleashes hell on earth, and the screenshots actually look really good on this one, so that one should be pretty cool. And then we have The Child Remains, and this is supposed to be based uh, or inspired by true events. So I'm, I'm very intrigued to do some more uh, investigating on this one and see what it's all about. But this is another one from Uncorked Entertainment. Uh, their couple's intimate weekend turns to terror as they discover their secluded country inn is a haunted maternity home where infants and mothers were murdered. So that sounds pretty dark. So I definitely have to check this one out. It just sounds bonkers. So uh, you can see all the praise on the back there. So maybe this one's pretty decent. Uh, this is called The Child Remains. And that one is from 2017, it looks like. Dropping stuff over here. And now we have an RLJ release. Um, so this is called Teeth and Blood and has a really good cover there. Uh, it says, Death is just the beginning. So I believe this is a uh, vampire movie. 
Yeah, it's on the set of horror director Vincent Augustine's latest film, Chapel Blood. Oh, that's cool. So uh, it's a movie that takes place on a movie set. So that should be pretty fun. Teeth and Blood from RJL looks pretty interesting on the back there. Uh, here's one. I think this is Wild Eye. Yeah, I was collecting a bunch of these in previous waves, but uh, I hadn't seen a lot of new ones, and so I haven't been getting them. But this is called Life Form, A Monster is Born. So this kind of reminds me of something like Splice. I don't know if it's related at all, but it says sometimes beauty is the beast on the back there. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, Wild Eye Entertainment has some, um, they can be hit or miss like all of these indie film companies, but I've seen some on there that I've actually really enjoyed. So, uh, and I was getting these when I was writing for a review website, I would get a bunch from Wild Eye. And I think uh, actually just when Cinefessions was doing uh, written reviews, I was getting some review material from them and I was able to find some really cool movies in there. So I, you know, I, I'm always willing to give them a shot. Uh, another one from Uncorked Entertainment here. This one is called The Witch in the Window. And so this is another supernatural horror film where they uh, buy this house in rural Vermont and uh, they in uncover the malicious spirit of Lydia, a previous owner. So going to be exactly what you expect it to be. Hopefully it'll be a pretty good one. The Witch in the Window from Uncorked. And then we have uh, a movie called Gremlin, and this is another one from Uncorked. This has a really cool looking cover there. You can't kill it. You can't escape it. You can only give it to someone you love. That actually reminds me of um, another movie I got from the Dollar Tree, Killing Katie Malone, I think it was what it was called. And that I got for a buck on Blu-ray, and I actually enjoyed that movie for what it was. I know that's probably a... Uh, not a very uh, well-received opinion or a popular opinion is the word I'm looking for, but I thought that was a pretty darn good uh, supernatural horror film. So maybe this one will be interesting as well. Monster movie fans are going to dig it. Amazing. Gremlin lives up to the hype. What kind of hype was surrounding Gremlin? Who knows? But uh, yeah, very excited for that one. And then we have, oh, this is cool because this has Scout Taylor Compton, who you might remember from uh, the Rob Zombie Halloween movies, amongst other things. She's kind of done quite a few low-budget horror films lately, but this is called Getaway. And it says, to survive, she must kill. And I think this is going to be a home invasion film. Um, but look at on the back here, like that mask right there is very Strangers-esque, which... Strangers, one of my favorite film franchises ever. Um, yeah, so this one looks awesome. Cannot wait to check that one out. That's another one I will definitely be prioritizing because I love uh, Scout Taylor Compton. So we'll see if that one's any good or not. So uh, actually, I need to move around some movies. So give me just one second. Another one from Uncorked Entertainment with a really cool looking cover. This is called The Life Changer. Um, it says it will drain the life out of you. But basically, this is about a shapeshifter who is trying to right the wrongs of his past. And he leaves a wake of bodies or a trail of bodies in his wake, I guess is what I should say. But um has a really um, like professionally done co back cover design, so that's cool. And actually, a boatload of special features down there, which is awesome. And commentary track, multiple commentary track, uh, behind the scenes, deleted scenes, uh, web link. That's interesting. So there may be they're actually online. Never seen that before. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, so this one looks pretty cool. Life changer. Another one with uh, just a really awesome cover. So. That's pretty much all it takes for me to pick up a movie at the Dollar Tree. Uh, this one still has a Walmart sticker on it. So this is uh, probably one of those $10 Walmart movies from years ago. This is called The Other Side. And this one is from someone else. This is from Illumination Filmworks. So I never heard of that one before. Um, but this one looks like it's a little bit older. What year is this? 2006, it looks like. So yeah, a little bit older than the other ones. But uh, yeah, it looks interesting on the back there some interesting screenshots at least so this is a film by greg bishop who i don't know but you might recognize that name uh this is cool this is another one right up my alley um i think this is kind of like a uh backwoods slasher film this is the redwood massacre and the it says here there's a pull quote we'll have you hooked from the very first minute to the very last so yeah gore hounds will love it slasher film of the year according to a uh, horror society so yeah very excited about this one there obviously it's just going to be a backwoods slasher film so i don't really need to explain the uh the like plot synopsis for most of these because they're they're very standard pretty much exactly Exactly what they look like. Uh, this one I thought looked really cool. It's called A Psycho's Path. So I don't know the, I don't recognize the actors up here. Oh, yes, I do. 
I just didn't read it right. This is uh, Quentin Rampage Jackson is in this one. So uh, he's been in quite a number of Dollar Tree films lately. Uh, I've talked about him a few times. So yeah, between Dollar Tree and Big Lots, I guess. But this one is from... Oh, this one actually has a uh, movie spree digital code with it as well. So that's cool. Sounds pretty interesting with the former UFC fighter in there. Uh, this next one is called Coven, Practicing Their Craft, Killing Their Prey. Obviously, just a witch movie. Beauty is Pain is what it says on the back there, so that's fun. Another one from Uncorked Entertainment, and just has a really interesting cover, so that one looks pretty fun. Then we have a werewolf film, so from witches over to werewolves. This is called Blood Moon. Uh, this night, the blood will flow. It's a surprisingly great monster movie, according to Phil Wheatley, so that's good. Um, it combines the thrills, action, and tension of a creature feature with the style and atmosphere of a western, according to Cave of Cult. So, oh my gosh, and it has 49 minutes of behind-the-scenes videos. Wow, that's impressive for a uh, low-budget DVD here. But Blood Moon, we'll see if that one's any good or not. And then we have a Bigfoot movie. I love these. This is called Hunting Grounds. The legend is real and hungry. And this is another one from, you guessed it, Uncorked Entertainment. A fractured family, angry Sasquatch. That doesn't really make that pull quote or that tagline doesn't really make sense to me. But uh, that's what it is. This, of course, is just going to be a Bigfoot movie, which I tend to enjoy. So excited to check that one out. And then we have a, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? A sci-fi horror film. This is called Plaguers. In space, everyone screams. And it just has a really cool, cool looking cover. There's some really cool creatures. So yeah, this one is, uh, Rails Back is solid, clearly inspired by The Thing. So that's a, a good reason to pick it up enough. Terror cannot be contained. Uh, when a band of space pirates hijack a fuel transport vessel bound for Earth, an alien virus known only as Thanatos is accidentally released. So that sounds really awesome. I definitely want to check this one out. Uh, this is from, when's this one from? 2000, 2019 from, oh, this is Wild Eye. I didn't even realize. So another one. See, I think Wild Eye just has some really interesting titles. Now, obviously, they're not all going to be great movies, but I think they're interesting, if nothing else. Um, so this one... Oh, this is cool. I didn't even realize. So this is from uh, Darren Lynn Bowsman, who did uh, Saw 2, 3, and 4. This is a horror film with brains and atmosphere. It's called Saint Agatha. So atone for your sins is the tagline there. A pregnant, unmarried woman on the run from her abusive father seeks refuge in a, co a convent hidden in deafening isolation. So yeah, that sounds interesting. This one should be pretty creepy. And Darren Lynn Bowsman is just a genuinely good director. I love his work on the Saw films. So this one should be pretty cool. Another one from uh, Uncorked Entertainment, as you probably would have guessed. Next up is also from Uncorked. This is called Monolith. And this is uh, very reminiscent of Death Proof, if you've seen that. But it says the safest car ever conceived is now the ultimate death trap. So I don't know. I love Death Proof. I think it's such a fun movie. So I will definitely be interested in checking this one out. Uh, it just sounds really interesting. So we'll check it out. I, I think the title is kind of, I don't know, weird, generic, not very good, but we'll see. Oh, and then keeping with the car theme here, we have the sequel to the original car. This is The Car Road to Revenge, the unrated version of this. Um, so if you've not seen the car, it's basically, it's described as like Jaws on land with a car. That's basically what it is. Um, that one, some I, I re actually imported that one, but I know it's available on, I forget what company released it here in the States. Maybe, maybe Arrow, I don't remember, but um, I do own that one. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. I haven't watched it in a very long time, so I don't remember it. Frankly, I might not even have finished it. I may have watched the first half. I don't remember. But yeah, I had to pick up the sequel, so excited to have that one. I know this is uh, my buddy Chris. Like He always talks about how The Car is his mom's favorite film, um, and so I know he's looking for this one too. But yeah, this looks really cool. The Car, Road to Revenge, the unrated version. So this one is really interesting because I actually just watched one of this guy's movies on Shudder, uh, and this is available on Shudder as well, so I don't know why I bought it, but just to support him, it's... Uh, from director Bruce Wemple. This is called Monstrous. And this is another Bigfoot film or a Yeti movie, whatever you want to call it, Sasquatch, whatever. Um, by the time you see it, you're already dead. So uh, I watched, I'm going to forget the title of the film. I'll put it here because I, I don't remember the title of the movie, but um, it was 
uh, not great, not a great movie by any stretch, but like he is, uh, his vision is very interesting. Uh, he does a lot with a very little. And so I'm very intrigued to check out more of his work just to see if maybe there's something else that connects with me a little bit more. Um, and this is one I started, I only got like two or three minutes in before I had to end up shutting it off for whatever reason, but I uh, figured I would support it, see if it's any good or not. So Monstrous, another uh, Bigfoot film, which I'm all about. So I'm getting into some of the, the DVDs that I was a little bit more excited about here at the end. Um, and this one, I don't don't know how I've heard of this because it's from Uncorked Entertainment, but it's called Antrim, the deadliest film ever made. I, again, I have no idea how I've heard of this. I, I just don't remember, but I know I've heard of this film before. Um, downright creepy, unnerving. Antrim is both a, spook, a spooky viewing experience and a profound mediation of the power of cinema to inspire and disturb. So some interesting poll quotes on here, but uh, yeah, it says uh, Antrim appears as a cursed film from the 1970s. So, I don't know. We'll see. Looks really interesting. Has a really cool premise behind it. So, yeah, we'll check it out. And I love the cover. I think the cover is just cool looking too. So, Antrim, if you know more about that one, let me know because I know I know of it, but I can't remember why right now. Uh, this one I was really excited to find. So, I think this was last year. I found the first and the third movie in this series and I needed the second one. Well, now waiting, uh, being patient and waiting, I now have Lake Fear 2, The Swamp. So what I've heard, uh, if I remember right, is that these movies aren't really related. At least the second one is not really related to the first one. Um, but that's okay. I now have all three films in that franchise. So yeah, very excited to own all these. This is from ITM and it does have a slip cover, which is cool. So yeah, we'll check this one out. Directed by Sean Therian. And uh, yeah, so it says, for one unlucky group of thrill-seeking spring breakers, their adventure leads to the black waters of the Florida Everglades. So should be pretty fun. Lake Fear 2, The Swamp. And then the last uh, DVD I ended up picking up. And this one I am so happy I found because it has been in my Hamilton book cart for like six months now. I've been, I keep meaning to place an order there, but other things pop up and I haven't done it. Um, this I've heard described as like the expendables of for horror films. Actually, it's, it says it right there. But this is called Death House, uh, and it has an amazing cast. You can see Kane Hodder in the uh, front here, um, but uh, Sid Haig is in here, D. Wallace, Bill Mosley, uh, Chuck Michael Berryman is in here, uh, Sid Haig up there. Uh, just an amazing cast on this one. And so I cannot wait to watch this. Um, I was excited to pay like the three or four bucks or whatever it was from Hamilton Book to get this one. So the fact that I found it for a buck was amazing. Unfortunately, this is the only one I've been able to find of Death House at the Dollar Tree. So I don't have any doubles of this, unfortunately. But yeah, this one I am super excited to visit. Probably will be the first one I end up watching from this lot. But yeah, so Death House is the last DVD I ended up picking up. So now let's jump over to those Blu-rays. So I do have a couple of non-horror Blu-rays that I ended up picking up today. Uh, these are both war films, World War II, I believe. Uh, the first one here is called Mission of Honor. And I know my buddy is rolling his eyes right now because I told him I had it in my hand and I put it down because I didn't think it sounded good enough. But uh, I read it again and it sounds probably fine. It'll probably be decent. Uh, this is basically about uh, these uh, group of soldiers who are fighting in enemy territory to try to survive and help win the war. Obviously, that's pretty much what all war movies are about, right? Uh, so yeah, Mission of Honor. That one looks decent enough for a dollar Blu-ray. And then we have another World War II film called Thousand Yard Stare. So this is one that I've seen in previous halls or pre uh, previous waves rather, but I've never seen it in my area. So I was happy to pick it up. I've heard kind of good things about it. It's basically about how war is affecting the individual and uh, the post-traumatic stress disorder order that is caused for some people. So yeah, it sounds pretty interesting. Should be a good one, especially for a buck. Um, and then the last, uh, I, I guess this might be horror. I don't know, but I feel like it's maybe more dark fantasy. This is called Righteous Villains. I think the poll quote, yeah, it says, before the apocalypse, there will be war. So it just looks like a good versus evil uh, epic dark fantasy. So I figured I would pick it up. Um, this is another one I saw on DVD. Didn't want it on DVD, but then when I saw the Blu-ray, I figured, yeah, for a dollar, let's grab it. Why not? All right, so the final four are all horror movies on Blu-ray. So the first one here is another one that was in previous waves that I never saw, uh, but this is called Killer Tattooist, and I am so excited to have this one in the collection now. It says, he always leaves his mark. So yeah, it is just a... Uh, <laughs> 
a, a serial killer who tattoos his victims. So yeah, very intrigued to check this one out. It's directed by Terry Lee Coker from 2020. So released last year. So yeah, I've heard about this one and was super excited to find it at my Dollar Tree. Um, and then here's one that I feel like my buddy found this on DVD from Walmart. I don't know, six to eight months ago and pay 10 bucks for it. I found it on Blu-ray for a buck. So I was happy I ended up holding off, but this is called Voodoo Apocalypse. Uh, and it looks like just like one of those exploitation films that I cannot wait. A modern day exploitation film. Like look at the back. It just looks bonkers. I think it's like an, a, a zombie apocalypse movie, but done in a very exploitative style. So I cannot wait to see this one. I'm hoping it'll be worth the buck that I paid for it. Uh, and then this is another movie that I have been wanting to see for a very long time. This is an older one. What year is this? 2008. And it is a slasher film and it actually stars Kaylee Kuko from The Big Bang Theory, which I've talked about recently. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, and I love Kaylee Kuko. This is, I think this was actually before she started doing uh, anything on Big Bang Theory, if I remember right. Maybe right around the same time. I don't know exactly. But this is Killer Movie. Uh, and it says, Fear Reality. So Leighton Meester, Kaylee Kuko, Jason London, and Nestor Carbonell in this one. And directed by Jeff Fisher, like I said, from 2008. So yeah, just a slasher film that I have wanted to see since it came out. I've always heard about it. Always supposed to be just one of those kind of low budget, not that great slasher films, which right up my alley. I'm all about. Let's do it. So yeah, very happy to have a killer movie in the collection finally after all these years. And I think that one is actually available on a triple pack from Hamilton Book. Uh, I don't remember the other two movies on there, but it's either a triple pack or a double pack. So I might end up getting that and getting rid of this one, but we'll see. Uh, and then last but not least, the very last one I found here. So this is actually a steel book and it just rests in that category of why does a steel book exist for this movie? I have no idea. This is from Echo Bridge. This is called Wolvesbane. So obviously this is a werewolf story. I think it actually mentions, yeah, Van Helsing is in this. So yeah, going to be very interested. There's no J card. So what you see is actually the back of the steelbook. So there's that. But I think the, the steelbook, I, nothing to write home about, of course, but I found a steelbook at the Dollar Tree. So I'm excited about that. Should I open this and see what the inside looks like? I guess I will. Let's just take a look and see if there's anything interesting on the inside of the steelbook. So you guys know if you're out and about looking for it. Okay. Doesn't look uh, terrible. I can't get the the Blu-ray out right now. There we go. So there actually is something better than some steel books. Some steel books just have like nothing on the inside, and so at least there's something here. So that's cool. Uh, yeah. So that is Wolf's Wolvesbane on Blu-ray on Steelbook. So I never found a Steelbook at the Dollar Tree before, at least that I remember. And so this is a really cool one. So that is it. That is everything that I found in this video. All right, so there are all of the Blu-rays, at least, that I found for this half of the video, and I am so excited. Uh, like I said in part one, I was so impressed with this wave, especially compared to the June wave. There were just so many more interesting titles, so many more Blu-rays. I got so many Blu-rays this time around, so I was really happy with this haul. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, have you been able to find any cool movies at your places? Let me know what you found down below. If there's anything else that I should be looking out for, post that down below, too. I really appreciate it because you guys help uh, focus me when I'm in the stores. I know what to look for. So thank you for leaving those comments down below. As always, if you guys did enjoy this video, please give it a like down below and maybe consider subscribing to the channel here on YouTube. Um, like I always say, I don't just talk movies. I talk all things media, be it books, movies, video games, manga, graphic novels. If it's media related, I'm interested in it. And if you are too, you might consider subscribing. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for today. I just want to say thank you all so much for watching and I want to encourage you to consume some media today. I'll catch you next time.